the case of Cynthia Kaufman for our kickoff case for Valentine's Crimes Month. Obviously, the month of February. We're, I'm kind of going to cover like revenge killings, killer couples, lethal lovers, all that fun junk. So today we're going to be talking about Cynthia Kaufman. So Cynthia Kaufman is actually currently awaiting her death sentence to be played out. And this is because she is currently on death row for two convictions of murder. So her and her boyfriend, James Marlowe, their crime spree lasted from October of 1986 to November of 1986. So literally only a month long. But in order for you guys to really understand her kind of defense of what she used, we have to kind of go back to her upbringing a little bit. Not fully into her upbringing, but like her first really like full romantic relationship. So her father left their family and it basically just left her, her two siblings and her mom. Thankfully, her mom came from a wealthy family or a wealthier background. So they didn't have to be without. They lived comfortably, comfortably, com comfortably. They lived comfortably. And their household was also a devout Catholic household. So she grew up with certain expectations of herself. But like any girl that becomes infatuated with boys, she started seeing somebody when she was in high school. And that did not stop her from fraternizing with this person and eventually having sex with this person. So her, she would fall pregnant by this boy, who was her boyfriend, at the age of 17. They went on to marry, but this marriage turned into quite a physically and mentally abusive one. She tried to make it work over five years, but she finally had enough. And what she did was is she left her husband and she left her child and she ended up going to Page, Arizona. And it said here in Page, Arizona, she went in the fall of 1985. She started working as a waitress and this is where she would befriend James Marlowe. She met him right after he was just released from jail. They soon would become romantically involved and Cynthia would move in with him in his apartment. But after they moved in together... That's when noise complaints started. They would party. They, their, loud, their music was too loud. They were just too loud in general. And all these complaints got to be too much. And then they were evicted. But that didn't stop their partying. Oh no. Cynthia and James would continue partying. And they would continue to party and mooch off of other friends and family. Until they would be stopped on May 8th, 1986. And this was during a routine traffic stop. While they actually were in California mooching off of James's family because they didn't have anywhere else to go. So it's during this traffic stop that they find a small pistol in Cynthia's purse along with some meth. And the car they were driving is actually James's wife's car that was stolen. So both of them were arrested, but this would start, like after this arrest, would start their crimes of robbery. And their robbery, they would break into homes and just basically to survive. They would steal stuff so they could pawn it or sell it so they could eat. They could buy more meth. Like, they did everything they could so they could eat and just do more drugs. So their first actual crime would happen on October 11th of 1986. And this is when they came across Sandra Neary. Sandra Neary was at an ATM and she was simply just trying to get money out. So after they spotted her, this is when they abducted her and they killed her. They would then leave her body in Corona County. So the, the police would be called after her abduction and her killing. But they were called because her car was still where it was parked and it hadn't moved. Her body wouldn't be found for quite some time. Their next murder or missing person would be on October 28th of 1986 and this was with Pamela Simmons. She would be reported missing on this day. Now it's clear that she went missing after she was trying to take money out of her bank account and obviously the involvement with Cynthia, J Cynthia and James wouldn't be known until way later. So it's after this murder they would go back to California. So they started in California, the next one was in Arizona, and then we go back to California. 
I know, a lot of fun. So on November 7th of 1986, Karina Novice, or Karina... Karina Novis, Novis, that's what it is, vanished from the last place she was, which is where she was cashing her check at Interstate Bank, and this was at the Redlands Mall. What happened to Karina would be admitted to after James and Cynthia were arrested. So we'll kind of talk about that in a little bit. Um, just a few days after this, so on November 12th, Linnell Murray was reported missing after she was last seen um, at the mall and she never returned home. You see, her boyfriend was extremely worried because he hadn't heard from her and it's not like her to not just disappear. So he started to search for her. He, what he found is he found her car outside of the dry cleaners, which is where she worked. Her body would ultimately be found in a motel room in Huntington Beach, Florida on the following day of November 8th of 1986. How, how did they find her, you ask? Well, this is how. So when they were searching for her, they would find a checkbook that belonged to Linnell in Laguna Niguel. Now in this dumpster also, they didn't just find the checkbook. Oh no. They also found uh, some takeout bags for food that literally had James and Cynthia's full names on it. So after this, they find Linnell's body. They were able to like continue to track Cynthia and James. Eventually they would be caught, but also in the motel room that they would track them down to, they also found what seemed to be them practicing Linnell's signature so they could commit fraud. So after the initial of their finding out who this is, a manhunt would soon start for them and then a tip would come in. And this tip basically said that the couple was in Big Bear Lake. So the investigative team and all of the like the manhunt squad that they had would show up to Big Bear Lake and basically they would find the couple. Uh, they were just hiking in the woods, hiking to get away, but they, they did surrender. They surrendered peacefully. They were arrested on November 14th of 1986, so not very long after they took Linnell, just two days. So, it's after they were arrested, Cynthia would admit that they killed uh, Karina, Novi Karina Novis. I'm going to keep saying her name wrong. She admitted that they killed Karina Novis, and she also would lead them to a vineyard in which she was buried in Fontana, and she was buried in a shallow grave. So both James and Cynthia were held with no bond. And while in, they were in lockup, they basically would accuse each other of the crimes. Because now they're separated. This separation, plus they're not doing drugs anymore, this toxic love they have for one another is now growing apart. So it's easy for them to flip on each other. So their trial would start on July 18th of 1989. And Cynthia would use a defense that she was battered and brainwashed and she was starved by James. And this is why she didn't run from him. And this is why she went along with the murder spree. So she already shows that she had a domestic violence or a violence ridded marriage previously. And she used that in her defense, but it did not help her. It did not help her at all. She insisted during the trial that James was controlling and that she didn't understand the severity of her actions. Well, the jury did not accept any of this. They thought it was hogwash and horse shit. And she was sentenced for that they ended up committing together. Cynthia is actually the first woman to receive a death sentence in California after they reinstated the death penalty. It's also said that after this first indictment, she was then brought back for another murder that her and James committed, and she received a life imprisonment sentence for that as well. And like I said before, she is currently waiting for her death sentence to be carried out, and she is at the Central California Women's Facility. So, have any thoughts? Put them in the comments down below. I would love to know, and I'll see you guys tomorrow in another Valentine's Crime video.